Hello folks, welcome back again. Part 2, Does the Devil Make Us Do It? In this uh, section, we're going to be taking a look at John chapter 8. In the last uh, video, part 1, we looked at creation, temptation, and the fall of mankind. Um, this time we're looking into John chapter 8, and we bring up two different uh, words uh, to explain uh, uh, how, well, how the devil can make you do it, kind of. Last, because I know these are true-false, and but usually they're, uh, uh, every video you could probably say, oh, okay, he's going to say it's false. Um, and mainly because that's what I've said for all of them so far. Um, the, the last one was the closest that we came to a gray area. This one is probably the closest that we're going to come to true, actually, in John chapter 8. But before we do that, uh, let's open up with prayer. And we're going to pray using hymn 666 from the LSB. Oh, little flock. Fear not the foe, who madly seeks your overthrow. Dread not his rage and power, and though your courage sometimes faints, his seeming triumph, O oh God's saints, lasts but a little hour. Be of good cheer, your cause belongs to him who can avenge your wrongs. Leave it to him our Lord though hidden yet from mortal eyes his Gideon shall for you arise uphold you in his and his word as true as God's own word is true not hell nor no not earth nor hell's satanic crew against us shall prevail there might a joke a mere facade God is with us and we with God. Our victory cannot fail. Amen, Lord Jesus, grant our prayer. Great Captain, now thine arm make bear. Fight for us once again. So shall thy saints and martyrs raise and a mighty chorus to thy praise. Forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, in chapter 8, to give a little bit of background, um, what we're going to focus on is going to be is going to begin at verse 39, but before you get there too quickly, uh, I want to give a little bit of background. Uh, particularly, Christ begins to talk about himself as the light of the world, uh, and then he, uh, he comes into, from the light of the world, uh, he, he it really goes back to John 1, chapter 1. Um, and John is recording again when Christ talks about himself as the light of the world. And then he recounts what St. John wrote about John the Baptist and John the Baptist's account of Jesus, that he was the one who, be, who bore witness to the light. Now, this light that comes into the darkness of the world um, carries with him authority. And that authority is not of his own accord, but is given unto him by his Father. There, so, so there we get this fatherly uh, language that as, we, as we continue in uh, chapter 8. Uh, so so we'll, first... Uh, uh, we're going to skip around a little bit, but Christ is in the middle of uh, saying that you judge according to the flesh, I judge no one, uh, yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father uh, who, who sent me. Uh, there again, he's, his Father is talking about, he, he's giving him the authority. Uh, in your law, it is written that, that the testimony of two people is true. Uh, I am one who bears witness about myself. The Father who sent me bears witness about me. 
Again, the Father language. Uh, what the Father does, what the Father does, is He hands over the authority to His Son to do with as uh, as the Son will do. He takes that authority to the cross, uh, to be crucified, um, and and raised. Uh, he takes that authority and he, and he forgives uh, in his name and he baptizes in his name and he communes uh, with his own body and blood. He takes that authority uh, and he becomes the key, uh, the key that unlocks our, our binds. And we're going to get there also. Uh, there's a lot of ground to cover here. They said to him, therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered simply, you neither know me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. So that statement right there This video is not brought to you by Jason's Deli, but Jason's Deli and Hickory if you would like to send a tax deductible check to Arbusana, North Carolina, in Hickory, North Carolina, it would be much appreciated. Run it, please, my All right. So what Christ is saying is, uh, when he says, "If you knew me, uh, you would know my Father also." Um, that that separate that is truly separating the sheep and the goats. Uh, saying that those who have faith and those who do not have faith. And so, with that in mind, I want to jump uh, to these words here. So they said to him, "Who are you?" Jesus said to them. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning. Fair enough. I love that that he, that he, that humanity of Christ. I've already told you this. You're asking me who I am, and I've told you. Okay, fine. You want? You're not asking me who I am. You're asking me for my for my pedigree. Here is my pedigree. Um, well, he ends up telling them. I have much to say, uh, I have much to say about you, and much to judge. But he who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the Father, even though we just said. Anyway. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he. And that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. So right there, we see that authority of the Father being given to the Son. I do nothing of my own authority, but by the but by the, the the authority that the Father has given unto me, that is the authority that I have, the authority given by from the Father to the Son, and post resurrection, post crucifixion, resurrection in Matthew uh, chapter twenty eight, he comes back and he says, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given unto me, after the sacrifice, and I say to you then. With that authority, go therefore, baptize all Gentiles, all nations, uh, and teach them to observe all things. And remember, I, with this authority, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So that's what Christ does with that authority. Now, Jesus says to the Jews who had believed in him, If you, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus is not quoting Martin Luther King Jr. Jesus said this first. 
But this is often, of course, uh, quoted. The truth will set you free. Well, the Jews during this, this particular time, when Christ said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, the Jews did not get on social media and start memeing these inspirational quotes. All right? There were no posters with um, freedom and a picture of an eagle and the truth will set you free uh, uh, in your cubicle. Uh, being illuminated by the fl fluorescence, um, there, there was there was none of that. The Jews, in fact, said uh, uh, buffed, rebuffed against Jesus and said, "What do you mean we could be free? We can't be. Or, or, or what do you mean that you can set us free? How can the truth set us free when we're not enslaved? You see, we can't be set free if we're already free." We're, we are the children of Abraham. We have never been enslaved. You can't free a free guy. Um, you know, try it sometime. Walk up to someone on the side of the road and say, uh, I, I, by my authority, free you. And see what happens in, in the United States of America. He will depending on who it is, I suppose, look at you very strange. Because to him, he is a free man. In America, he is free. I am the son. I, 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 we are the children of Uncle Sam. How can you say that we are a slave to anyone? You get it. We are the offspring of Abraham. We have never been a slave to anyone. How is it then that you can say, you will become free. And Jesus answered them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. Boom! Separation of the sea, uh, of sheep from the goats. The word is not in you. Therefore, if the word is not in you, you do not, uh, you do not have my word. If you do not have my word, you do not have the, uh, you do not have the blessing of the authority that has been given to the Son by the Father. Therefore, I, um, I know that you are the offspring of Abraham. Yet you, yet you seek to come in because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. But Christ has not told them who their father is, but he speaks of his father as greater than Abraham. This, uh, this obviously would be unsettling to, to the Jews who... Uh, had memor at this point had memorized uh, Father Abraham had many sons had many sons had Father Abraham they had already committed all of that to memory and um, and so to, to think of someone greater than uh, Father Abraham um, is just unthinkable so they want to know uh, they don't want to know actually they, they, they yell out uh, they answer him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said to them, Oh yeah? Oh, that's not in here. Sorry. Oh yeah? If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. What you are doing you are doing the works your father did. They said to him, We were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. God said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. 
again, you can see the, the authoritarian um, uh, uh, understanding of father and son. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. Boom! Separation between the sheep and the goats. So who are they? who's their father? You are the father of the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he has nothing to do with the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? I tell you the truth. Why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reasons why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Does the devil make you do it? True or false? Let's back it up with the question. Who is your father? If your father is the father that sent Christ in your stead, to atone for your sins on the cross, to raise again, and everything that I just said about authority, then you will speak along. Uh, you, you will you will invoke and and uh, uh, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and by doing so and by your faith, you will incantationally uh, 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 speak and believe the word of truth. Those are the two words that I want that I wanted to bring up that I learned by studying the book of Harry Potter. Uh, they're not in the book particularly, but they're in the research of the book. Uh, but they're actually older words, church words, ecclesi ecclesial words, um, incantational and invocational. Now we most of us know invocational. To invoke someone is to basically to turn their face towards you. Uh, the the invocation uh, it, it, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen tracing the uh, baptismal markings upon your forehead incantational um, we it, in in the liturgy would be uh, when we get to the intro uh, the psalmody uh, where we where we chant to chant together. In, in, in incantation, we, uh, we, we are in harmony with, with one another. Uh, therefore, when God is, is invoked in baptism, our lives are lived in, incantationally with, uh, by faith according to the will of God. Uh, the opposite is true for Satan. Um, if Satan is your father, if you reject uh, Christ and his faith, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, Christ and in His faith get, uh, given, then uh, you have given yourself over uh, to Satan. There is no middle ground. Uh, you, you must be a slave. You are either a slave to sin and Satan, or you are a slave to the gospel, which actually frees you. But no man is free to his own accord. Um, you you are either a uh, uh, well as as Bob Dylan would later put it, um, it might be the devil or it might be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. So there is no middle ground there. Well, just as the invocation and incantation understanding uh, of of the Triune God um, uh, lives out in the life of a Christian. So the understanding of invocational and incantational evil works through Satan, his demons, uh, and his evil deeds. Um, those who speak of their father, who is Satan, um, does so invocationally, calling upon their father to speak on his, uh, or, or, and, and they speak on his behalf. Um, they willingly give themselves over to speak incantationally, in harmony with 
Satan. Um, now, this see, see the, the thing about it is, though, the answer to this is, yes, the devil does make you do it. True. It's true. But it's not as simple as you're walking down the street, ho-hum, and then you're sacrificing uh, people on Main Street uh, in, in the middle of a bloody pentagram. Um, but giving yourself over uh, to, your, to that, your father, the devil, uh, and desiring his will and his ways, uh, you will, your life will live incantationally or in harmony uh, with him. That is, that you will lie, love the lies, live in the lies, and, uh, and, and, and will continue to spread the lies to, to, to the honor of your father, the father of lies. So yes, the devil makes you do it, but not because you are neutral, but because you love what the father has to give. If the father is the, if, if your father is of the devil, then you hate the will of God the Father. Um, you hate the incantational life of a Christian uh, that lives incantationally in faith. Um, you love the darkness. Uh, you hide from the light. And you live incantationally with Satan, uh, gladly giving yourself over. Um, and I'm not just talking about sa satanic worship. I mean, nihilism. The fact that nothing matters and nothing, once you die, nothing exists. Um, that, 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 that uh, the, the kind of guys you don't want to hang out with. Um, Gnostics, Gnostics uh, um, that giving themselves over through heresy and, and, and blasphemies. Um, atheists who believe that God does not exist gladly give themselves over to Satan um, by, by immersing themselves in the lie of atheism and dwelling in that pool of atheism. If you dwell in that pool uh, uh, long enough, um, your you, you, your body reacts and you, your your fingers become pruned in the evil, uh, and and you you react to to the water, you react to the Father, you react to the will of Him. So Satan makes you do it, uh, but he makes you do it insofar as you love to do it, and you desire to do the will of your Father. Uh, on, on the flip side of that, uh, this is the biggest plug for infant baptism. Um, our baptismal rite says that we are uh, all born in sin and under the power of the devil until God claims us as his own. Therefore, we, are, we should rush our infants and rush our children to the water, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then, uh, in that baptism, they have become a child of God. Being a child of God means God is your father, and the child uh, has, has been forever uh, uh, invoked in that baptism. And every time they come to the liturgy, every time Augustana comes to Augustana, and they hear the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, um, uh, they're reminded of their baptism and that they are a child of God. And if they are a child of the Father, then they dwell in the Son, whom the Father gave the authority to. And if they dwell in the authority, uh, the Son, and the authority given to the Son, uh, then they dwell with every, in everything that the Son did with the authority. And what the Son did with the authority was be crucified, buried, raised, ascended, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. And we live our lives in incantationally in that faith. Coram Deo, in the presence of God. Um, and what a blessing that is. So the devil makes you, so yeah, it's true. The devil does make you do it. 
if he is your father and you love him. Um, yet if uh, you are baptized and believe, touch your forehead and know that it is God who lives in you. As you sin, repent, and at like the prodigal son, the father runs to you, receives you, come into the embrace of your master. Well done, good and faithful servant. Um, as we close, I would like to close with a little prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our God is not the cause of sin, as unbelievers would maintain. Sin only rise, raise, raise from Satan's art, and with, with help of man's perverted heart. Amen. That comes from the book Beauty in the Augsburg Confession. Uh, in, in, the, in, this, uh, in this work, art is put to the words of the Augsburg Confession, just as Beauty and, Beauty and Catechesis. Uh, and the one that I just read from was uh, The Cause of Sin, which you can really see the devil there in the mo mosaic um, uh, of uh, uh, Frau Jacopo, I believe. Yeah, Fra Jacopo, um, or at least it's, a, it's attributed to him. You can really see the devil uh, doing his business and 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 his, and being about his work there. Uh, and but at the end, you guys you see there, there's a prayer, uh, for uh, uh, a prayer set to the hymn. Or it's a hymn that I that I put as prayers for each one, uh, set to uh, the tune. Um, oh, of course, I just lost it now. This, is, this video was going so well. <sighs> Jason's Deli, right off of 70. Our God is not the cause of sin, as unbelievers would maintain. Sins only rise from Satan's art, with help of man's perverted heart. Then the next chapter would be, No, we good works may well reveal thy word of God is very clear that we are justified we own and saved by grace through grace alone Amen I didn't want to leave the prayer uh, there on that on that stanza. Go in the peace of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. And with that benediction, go incantationally. Live the faith uh, that has been given unto you by Christ, boldly proclaiming his word. And go to church.